Hello my data science friends. Well, not just data science anymore. Today onwards we are starting a new series for the generic computer science courses. Lately I've been getting a lot of requests from the people to make videos on generic computer science courses and how to apply on that and stuff. So here I am starting today. I'm starting a series for more generic computer science courses. And the first one is going to be the University of British Columbia in Canada. As my frequent viewers might have guessed by now why I am going with the University of British Columbia. But jokes apart, this is not about that. I reviewed this course and then only I went on with this course. This is much, much cheaper than the MDS course that you saw earlier on this channel. And this is one such course that you could definitely target if you want to study computer science in Canada. So as a ritual in the data science courses, we will firstly go with the university profile. So this university is situated in Vancouver in Canada and it's a public university world rank is 46 so we are talking about the top most universities in the world forget about just canada we are talking about the whole world and uh, the research output is very high student to faculty ratio is of course nice nine is to one scholarships there are a lot of scholarships in fact to be honest i won't be able to cover all the scholarships in this video this video is going to be very long because it is full of information there are three different modes in which you can study i'll be explaining all three more of them so i'm not going to go into a detail of the scholarships maybe in the near future i could make a different video for scholarships as you can see the international students are already 15,000. and if you talk about the university ranking by subject they have got a world rank of 25 in computer science and information systems so which is even better and uh, they have got the top most department in the world in, in terms of computer science and graduate employability ranking is also 38 so we are talking about one of the most sought after graduates university here so once you graduate you will be one of the most sought after not only in canada but in fact in any, any country if you like if you would like to do jobs so so going back to the course, this course goes by the name of MSc in Computer Science as I might have already told you about. So this is the landing page and uh, first things first, so the overview and uh, here they have talked about uh, when was this department established and the options available to study Computer Science MSc here. So let's just explore the options that are available for this particular course. So this is the main program page and here are the options available for you written so there are two options under the thesis program and one option under the essay program irrespective of the choice you make out of these three options the course is a 30 credit course in which you have to complete 30 credits the difference will be because of the research component essentially this course is uh, called a thesis based program irrespective of what option you go for so the two options the thesis options consist of 12 or 6 credit thesis and the essay option is a 3 credit essay so what's the difference between 12 or 6 credit thesis is like 12 credit thesis would be much more research intensive that means you will be conducting real research with real professors and you will be coming out with uh, some definitive new findings in your field and in six credit thesis is something an option given for the people who are not thinking of a phd right now but maybe could go for a further phd if they make up a mind after studying two years of msc here as far as essay option is concerned so in this you will be having three credits for that and rest of the credits are you know compensated with the core courses that you have to perform it is a very basic option for you for the ones who don't want to go much into the research part just a little bit of touch on that if not a whole thesis that you have to write you'll have to write an essay which should be on a top in computer science that's it so let's get into more detail into each of these courses so this is about the 12 credit msc thesis so as i told that there are 30 credits to be completed so 18 credits of course are to be completed apart from that 12 credit msc thesis of which a maximum of six credits could be from the 300 or 400 level undergraduate courses and uh, the criteria for the thesis of course it involves as i told it involves some original research results it involves novel implementation techniques and it involves the implementation of a piece of non-trivial software whose availability could have some impact on the computer science user community. At least should satisfy one or more of the following criteria. And uh, it should be approved by a committee of at least two people, including your faculty supervisor. You are required to present this thesis at a departmental seminar. And this is about the six credit MSc thesis. So in this, you will be completing a six credit MSc thesis and the rest of the 24 credits will have to be covered from all these courses of which a maximum of six credits again could be from the undergraduate level courses and rest of the courses are to be uh, chosen from the graduate level courses. Thesis again should be approved by the committee of at least two members and the presentation is also to be there. 
similar goes with the master's essay program so here only three credits will be there for this essay and the rest of the 27 courses are to be completed from the core courses bucket. There is a different criteria for this. So at least 21 credits must be from the computer science courses. Also a maximum of six undergraduate level courses could only be taken and uh, there is no need to submit the essay to the faculty of graduate or postdoctoral studies. Uh, it should be approved by again the at least two people including the faculty supervisor and it has to be presented again at the departmental seminar. So these kind of things are there for all the three all the three options. Now if we go back to that page in which most of the information is already there. So there are the quick facts. Uh, this is offered by the Department of Computer Science and the course is full time uh, delivered at the UBC Vancouver campus and uh, tuition as i already told you about this is not a money bagging course the international fees is just a nine thousand dollars per year so for two years you are only spending eighteen thousand we will talk about uh, it in detail in a while but i just mentioned the tuition fees to let you know that how cheap is this course you can go about it now before going for that you need to have some details of course so here is the eligibility criteria so the minimum academic requirements are you need to have a b plus overall in your undergraduate studies and there are separate requirements for the countries each country so let's just see the requirements for india so this is a page i saved some time and selected the country already so for here you will need to have a four-year degree which is a normal case three-year degrees are also accepted there are certain requirements however with those three-year degrees so either your applicant uh, either the applicant overall standing in degrees first class and the awarding institution is being accredited by uh, indian national assessment and accreditation council betterly known as nac with a grade of A or better, or your institute is an institution of national importance such as IITs. And uh, generally, if, apart from that, a four year bachelor degree is required, and first class by that means 65%, eight on a 10 point scale. So most of the universities in India follow 10 pointer. So eight, if you have a CGP of eight, then you are first class. And uh, the credentials or degrees are bachelor degree in engineering, forestry, or medicine. That is something unique i'm not going into the english language requirements here because these are old and it is generic to the courses of the department of graduate studies and this course have different english language requirements now let's just go back to that page again so the english language test so for this course the requirement for english language test is there if you have not studied at a university in canada or your language of instruction in the university was not english you will have to provide the english language test so in that toefl uh, they require an overall score of 100 with the sectional cutoffs written here 22 21 21 22 in all of these uh, sections and uh, ielts is also accepted with an overall score of 7 all of them having sectional cutoff of 6.5 each also other test scores are not required they have specifically written that gre is not required so you don't need to give gre or gmat for that and um, as for the application the things that are required for the application are of course the transcripts of your previous study letter of references you need a minimum of three maximum they haven't given you but at least three should be given here statement of interest also sometimes called a statement of intent and supervision so this is a research based course and uh, while you are filling up the form you will be required to uh, fill up a person who will be a potential supervisor to you in this course once you get selected so you'll need to uh, put in the name for that particular supervisor also you have to complete the online application form so heads up for you the applications are not open right now the applications will open around october this year and will go on till december so i'm just making this video in advance to let you guys know that this is the course that you can definitely target and uh, make it into your bucket list as for the tuition and financial support as i already told you the fees was close to nine thousand dollars for a single year and uh, for two years, the total tuition fees would have been 18,262 Canadian dollars, which if we convert into Indian rupees corresponds to 10 lakh 84 thousands. So look at the amount of money you are spending in Canada. Canada is expected to be the second most expensive country after US in terms of spending money on e education for uh, the international studies. But look at the number here. You are 
or uh, you are just spending under 11 lakhs for your two years of study and you're getting a degree from the world's top most universities also you will have to give an application fee of 168.25 dollars if you are an international student and if you convert it into Indian rupees that would be 10,000 as of the current rate. Now there are financial support programs available of course. There are a lot of scholarships as well. First of all is the program funding packages. I'm not sure if it is for each and every student out there but they have written that uh, the full-time MSc students will be supported at this amount per term for their first two terms and after that the people who are writing an MSc thesis remember 12 or 6 credit thesis they will be paid this much amount per term for the first two terms. So this is for the program funding packages. I'm not sure if everyone who is accredited into this course gets this or there are a separate application for this because they haven't written here. Also, they have uh, they have merit-based funding award list. We'll talk about it in a while. And uh, the teaching assistantship, research assistantships are there also, uh, of course. And also you can work while studying in the campus itself. So they have of uh, part-time jobs on campus itself. We will talk about it. There is a separate page for that as well. Okay, so then they have also given the research supervisors as well. So research supervisors are here and uh, these are the supervisors. You can have a screenshot or whatever you like. I'll pass this link as well so you can have a look at as well. Uh, there are a lot of people here based on your interest. You can just simply go with their names and there are some more pages as well. And these are not the only ones. If you find any other professor on the UBC page, you can definitely give their names as well. Uh, these are the sample thesis that people have written over past few years. Subsays optimization for machine learning, simulation of incompressible elastic material using zonal volume constraints, on path greed geometric spanners. All of these things are there, so you can do whatever you want on the thesis. There are a broad range of topics available in computer science. So this was pretty much about it. So let's just go into the application. So uh, the online application system you have to of course apply online and there is a fees as I already told you of 168 dollars for international student there is a different thing for some people uh, here uh, who are watching this video so there is an application fee waiver for following circumstances for the international applicants whose citizenship and correspondence address both is located in one of the world's 50 least developed countries as declared by the united nations so i have seen a lot of people have been watching my videos uh, from bangladesh and from african countries as well so good news for you guys or i shall say bad news i don't know what but uh, bangladesh ethiopia nepal uganda countries like these do come under the least developed countries and this is a benefit for you guys because your application fee will be waived you won't be asked for an application fee once you put in your country there into the application form you will not be asked for application fee and the complete list of eligible countries is here i'll pass this link so you can have a look at it according to your country and then you will be assured of if you have to pay the application fee or not for india it's not of course india is not the world's 50 least developed country so you will have to pay that 168 dollars anyway uh, there are two other circumstances as well these are not relevant to our case so we'll not go into that by by this time you must have read it already from the screen as well uh, they are not relevant to this particular course and uh, now if we talk about applying online what you have to do is to first of all understand the differences between ubc campuses in this case you don't have to do that because this course uh, is in the main vancouver campus so you don't need to understand the differences and uh, decide which program to apply to you already are aware about that develop a financial plan that is up to you uh, program specific requirements you have already seen prepare your documents uh, all the documents that I have already told you about on the first slide so the application fees uh, is accepted only through credit card payments uh, via Visa or MasterCard these are the only two uh, operators that are accepted and um, finally you have to verify that you have a campus-wide login account CWL account is the place that you will have to have an account where you can fill in your application have a check on your application status and all these things so information that is collected from that application form will be the use of information, personal and contact details, academic history, test scores, funding if you have any experience and interest, additional questions and references, these kind of things will be asked in that application. 
and uh, i was talking about uh, this part time work at the university of british columbia itself so this is called a work learn program this is very unique to university of british columbia and i particularly liked it a lot because there are a lot of jobs here available inside the campus itself and pay is really really good as well the example work learn positions are also given here so these are uh, oral microbiology project assistant marine operation staff environmental data analyst Uh, library shelving and circulation assistant these jobs are already over there and there are over 500 work learn positions available each term so you can look out for what uh, what job you can do based on your interest and that might help your career a boost time commitment so for winter session you are allowed to work a maximum of 10 hours per week and a total of 300 hours in the winter session and in the summer session you can work a maximum of 20 hours per week with a total of 300 hours in all and the pay and composition so the pay at the at these jobs ranges from 15.77 dollars to 32.66 dollars per hour based on the position of course so let's say if you work at 20 dollars per hour for 300 hours in a term so you will be earning 6000 dollars in a single term which is more than enough for you to uh, live on so you will at least be shelling out your living cost from that also there are some eligibility requirements for that you need to meet all the requirements you are a current ubc student you have or planning to apply for a valid social insurance number there is a special number in canada and you're not holding a co-op position for the term you are planning to hold a work learn position so co-op is also there in this uh, particular course so either you go for a co-op or you go for a work learn program you, uh, you can't go for both in tandem in a single term so either if you go for a co-op position or you go for work learn position and you can only hold one work learn position at a time and your research on work learn position is not based on your own thesis work these are the requirements specific requirements for students canadian students are here and international students graduate or masters you need to have a valid study permit and full time for immigration purposes in the term for you are planning to hold a work learn position and uh, you need to make sure you have a valid social insurance number before you start your work learn position these kind of things are required from your end and then you can just go apply to the career online page they have their own page and uh, then you can go to the opportunities work learn program you can browse the jobs and apply for that and here is the awards page so i put up all the filters to save some time and i got a whole list of lot of scholarships there some of them are not relevant to you some of them could be relevant for you I, i didn't get the time to get into the details of each of the scholarships but you can definitely go out i'll pass this link into the video description and you can have a look i'm not going to go into the details of the scholarship so that was pretty much about it about this particular course we have tried the computer science course for the first time i hope you like this video and i hope you will stick to the channel to get into more data science courses and computer science courses on this channel in the future i'll keep coming up with more computer science courses in the near future and if you like this course please go apply for this course and you like the video please share this video with your friends subscribe to the channel and help your friends out for the courses if they are willing to apply for computer science courses around the world until next video or wow